Hello, my name is Gal, and in this clip I'll show a demo of using RAP to develop and debug microservices running on a remote Kubernetes cluster. First thing we'll do is install our environment on the cluster. We're using Helm here, but you can use whatever you like. Raft is entirely agnostic, both to the environment definition and to the orchestration infrastructure. Let's take a look at what we've brought up. As you can see, this is the online boutique microservices demo by Google. It's 11 microservices that power this online shop. Looking at one of the products, you'll see that there's a bug in the recommendation service. It's returning four of the same item instead of four different items. Let's solve that together. Jumping back to the terminal, the first thing we will do is use Raft Connect to connect to the remote environment. Raft Connect brings up the Raft environment controller in the remote namespace, which acts as a gateway and allows interacting with the Kubernetes resources and workloads that are deployed in the namespace. It also initializes the controller with the contents of the local repository, setting it up for the seamless and continuous file sync that it sets up. Finally, Raft Connect will print out the list of the workloads that are available for development. Since we're going to be working on the recommendation service, let's go ahead and convert that to dev mode now. Converting to dev mode brings down the original deployment and brings it back up with slight modifications. Specifically, it adds mounts for the files synced from the local machine and, and installs our process supervisor. Raft has an IDE plugin through which you can interact with the workloads in the environment. As you can see, recommendations is in dev mode already. For each of these, we can open logs, we can run a shell, and we can, uh, we can control the process lifecycle as well through the stop and restart commands. Let's take a look at the list recommendations function. As you can see, on line 78, there's a small bug. We're using zero instead of I for, for each of the indexes. Let's fix it. Now, without using Raft, what we need to do would, would be to commit the code push it to a remote repository to have to trigger CI, have CI build images and then deploy them to the remote environment, all of which could take easily tens of minutes. With Raft, all we need to do is go to the workload, hit the restart button, and then see it in action. As you can see, within seconds, we've got feedback on the change, code change that we've made. This one was really easy, but what if it was more complex? We would probably want to interactively debug the process, but that can be really hard to do if it's running on a remote Kubernetes cluster. With Raft, though, it is super simple. We just hit the blue button, and we immediately spawn a debugging session with the remote process. It's already running. We can refresh, and we can, and then we have a fully-fledged debugging session. We can step over, step into, we can modify the behavior. Let's do something simple. Let's modify the prod list that we, we touched earlier and have it return just one item to see what, what happens. As you can see, we easily modified the behavior uh, through our debugging session. While it looks and feels local, everything happens entirely on the remote container. It works just as well on compiled languages too. Let's take a look. First, let's get out of the debugging session. And now let's add something to the cart. We'll be showing something related to the shipping calculation. As you can see, right now we have a flat 899 fee. Let's try making it take into account the quantity of items in our cart. To do that, we'll first go back to the Raft plugin and make the shipping workload in dev mode as well. Meanwhile, let's open up the code. This is the function that we'll want to modify, create quote from count. Let's change it to the code that I already have ready ahead of time. Make this take effect, all we need to do is run the new code. We can do that by just running through our IDE. Because it is a compiled language, we will first build the binary and then we will run it. Building is pretty fast refresh and we see that we've managed to change the behavior just as we'd expected. Again, we, we could do all this within several seconds instead of having to commit the code, going through CI, building images, deploying them, all just to see feedback from the, the change that we've made. If you'd like to hear more about how we can save development time, check out our website or contact us from the link below. See you!